Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys some more things we can do using that include statement in PHP. So the include statement is really awesome because it basically allows us to go out to another file and grab all the information in that file and include it in our own file. So in the last tutorial, I showed you guys how we could use include in order to go out and grab um, HTML from all these separate files and we can bring it all together and sort of like scaffold out um, our website. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how we can take that a step further and actually include other PHP files inside of our PHP file. And what you'll see is when we include other PHP files, things start to get really awesome. The first thing I'm going to do is show you guys how we can create a PHP file. And then I'm going to show you how we can actually include it here in our PHP. And I'll show you some cool stuff that we can do with it. So over here, I'm actually going to create a new PHP file. So I just have this site.php file and I'm gonna come up here and we'll just make a new file. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this article header.php. So basically this is going to be a file which is going to act as like the header for an article. So let's say that we were writing a blog or something and every blog post was gonna have like a specific header. And let's say that we want all of the headers on our website to look the same. So I want all the blog headers on the website to sort of have the same look and feel. This is the file where we can kind of define that look and feel. So what I wanna do is I'm basically going to design this article header. So let's say that every article on our blog website has like a title, an author, and a word count. And I'm actually gonna show you guys how we can use variables inside of this PHP file, and then we can actually give those variables values in another PHP file. So just stick with me for a second, and this is gonna make sense. Um, so this is gonna be our article header, and I'm actually just gonna make a header two. And what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna make some PHP tags. So I'm just gonna say less than sign, question mark, PHP, and then question mark, greater than sign. And in here, I'm just gonna print out the title. Inside of this header two, I'm printing out the value of this title variable. But you'll notice that I didn't actually give this a value and that's actually important. And you'll see later where we can actually give this a value. So in addition to the header two, I'm also going to create a header four for the author. So in here, again, we're gonna put some PHP tags and I'm gonna throw these here in the header four. And this time, instead of printing out the title, we're gonna print out the author. And then finally down here, we're gonna print out the word count. So I'm just gonna say word count colon. And again, I'm gonna put these PHP tags in here and we're gonna echo out the word count. So you'll notice that this is all this file is, right? I have a header two, I have a header four, and then I just have this like word count thing down here. So I, I'm not actually putting any information in here. I'm just printing out the values of variables but I didn't give any of these variables values yet. And I'll show you what we can do is we can actually include this article header file into another PHP file. And inside of that other PHP file, we can give these variables values. So down in this site.php file, I'm gonna come down here into my PHP tags and I'm just gonna say include, and I wanna include that file. So it's article header.php. So when I include this file, you'll see over here when I refresh my page that we get this little skeleton here. So if I actually um, viewed the page source, you'll see over here in the page source, we have this header two, we have this header four, and we have word count. So we actually got all of that information from that other file, but these things are all empty, so they don't have any values. And so what we can do is inside of this site.php file, where we included this article header, we can actually give these variables some values. So up here above, I'm gonna give the title variable a value, I'm gonna give the article variable a value, and I'm gonna give the word count variable a value. So I could say title, and we could just say this is my first post. So this is like my blog post title. And then down here, the author is gonna be me, it's gonna be Mike. And then we can also do word count. So over here, we'll say word count is equal to, let's say 400. So I'm actually assigning these variables values in this PHP file, then I'm including this article header. Now, when I refresh my page, you'll see that all of that information gets populated. So I basically created like a little template over here in this article header.php file. And I was basically like, okay, we're gonna put the title in here, we're gonna put the author in here and the word count in here. But I didn't give those values. 
I'm actually letting the pages that include the article header assign those values. So on this site.php file, I could give this, you know, one title, one author, and another word count. But if I was to create a separate PHP file, so if I created like two or three or four more PHP files, when I created different blog posts, I could give those different titles, different authors, and different word counts. So even though I'm including the same file article header, depending on the file that I'm including it from, I can give it different information. And that is extremely powerful because we can basically define these little templates over here. And then these templates will get populated with the data that for example, like this site.php file assigned. So we can assign a value for title, a value for author, and a value for word count. And one of the other cool things is if I ever wanted to change the way that article header looked and felt, like all I have to do is change it over here. So I could change this to like an H1 instead of an H2. And I don't have to change anything over here in site.php. Everything is still gonna work correctly but the styling will be updated. So this is essentially how you can take these includes to the next level. Like not only can you include static HTML, but you can also include dynamic PHP and you can populate the values in that PHP um, inside of the PHP file that's including it. So that's one really useful way that we can use these. Now I wanna show you guys one more thing we can do. We can actually include PHP files that have um, like variables and functions inside of them. So I'm actually just gonna get rid of this stuff. And you guys will see over here, I have this file, it's called usefultools.php. And if I open this up, it's a very simple file. Um, I have a variable over here, it's called feet and miles. And this is basically like how many feet there are in a mile. So this might be like some value that I wanna keep track of. And then I also have this function over here called say hi. It takes a name parameter and it just prints out hello name. So this is a very simple file, but let's say that I wanted to use all the functionality that was in this file. So I wanted to use that say hi function and I wanted to use that feet in mile attribute, but I wanted to use it inside of my site.php file. I could actually come down here and I could just say include useful tools.php. And now that I included this file, I can use all of that functionality and I can use that variable. So I could come over here and I could say like, say hi and I could pass in a name. And now I'm actually gonna be able to use that say hi function. So when I refresh the page, it says, hello, Mike. I could also use that variable. So I could print out feet in mile and this is gonna go ahead and print that out for me. So over here, we're printing out 5,280. So even though I didn't write this function and I didn't create this variable inside of my site.php file, inside of this file over here, I was still able to use that function and that variable because I included this PHP file. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll create a file just like this, useful tools, and they'll have a bunch of functions in it or they'll have variables in there. They'll have you know a bunch of PHP code in there and this is sort of like its own you know, PHP file. And then when they wanna use all that functionality, they'll just include the file um, inside of their PHP file, and then they can use those functions or those variables to do whatever they want. So those are two really powerful ways that you can use this include command. So over here with the article header, we basically created this like little template, and then we let um, whoever was including it decide what the title, author, and the word count would be. And then over here, we defined a bunch of like, we defined a function and a variable, and we were able to use that function and that variable um, just by including this file. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.